Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements for where other healthcare healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. We are here for you. We want to be your go-to nutritional resource for all things health. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Bright Side Ben phone team. You can also ask them about joining the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if nutritional supplementation has helped you or your loved ones, and you want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, call 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase longevity products at our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol as well as vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactants, Actins, emulsifiers, water, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. All our truth treatment products are 100%, 100% active and functional ingredients. No fluff. It's the real deal. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Transdermal Sea Balm. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about heart disease and what it's about and what it's not about. What it's not about certainly is cholesterol and cholesterol blockages. Yesterday we started to talk about what it is about. Are cholesterol blockages present? Yes, of course they are. I'm not saying cholesterol and cholesterol blockages aren't there, but that doesn't necessarily equate with disease because of the phenomena of collateralization. Collateralization, which is the way the body, always adaptive, the body is always looking for healing, the bodies are a healing and regenerating system, as we say every day on the bright side. Because of this phenomena of collateralization, just because you have a cholesterol blockage doesn't mean you're going to necessarily have heart disease. Collateralization is the formation of collateral vessels that are actually uh, actually act as nature's bypass. It's a natural form of bypass. Collateral blood vessels can be so small, you don't even see them on an angiogram, but they bypass, they, they act as a bypass around blockages. So they provide the oxygen, well, they provide the heart with oxygen. Nature's bypass, according to Dr. Thomas Cowan, these collateral vessels can completely restore oxygenation to the heart. 
And we can support collateralization with things like exercise, especially aerobic exercise. The more you exercise, the more of these collateral vessels you'll get, the more oxygen uh, your heart will get. This is an adaptive mechanism. When we exercise, our body says, oh my gosh, we gotta get more oxygen to the heart because our owner is it working out, is exercising, so you get more collateral blood vessels. Nutritional support can also uh, improve collateralization. Essential fatty acids, magnesium, zinc, vitamin C, anti-diabetic strategies can be important. Good lifestyle, oh, good lifestyle issues. This is what we're talking about here, you guys. Heart health is not necessarily medical, medicalization. It doesn't necessarily involve your doctor. All the things that we know we should be doing, eating right, exercising, aerobic exercise, taking nutritional supplements, using coenzyme Q10 and magnesium and zinc, all of these support this collateralization process. So just because you have a heart blockage, just because you got cholesterol in your arteries doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have heart disease. And as we've outlined extensively, taking a statin drug is going to make very little difference, except statistically, in terms of numbers, statistics, and it doesn't even make much of a difference statistically either, 1%. When you take a statin drug, what you will definitely do is deplete your body of key nutrients. What you will definitely do is deplete your body of coenzyme Q10, arguably one of the most important nutritional supplements you could ever take for the heart, one of the most important nutrients there is for the heart. You'll deplete your body of zinc. You'll deplete your body of vitamin E, both extremely important for the heart, not just important for the heart, important for overall health. Vitamin E is important for the brain. It's important for the immune system. It protects all our cells. Zinc is important for the bones. It's important for the digestive system. It's important for the immune system. It's important for the brain. Coenzyme Q10 is important for the liver. It's important for the heart. It's important for all cells. And you will definitely be depleting your body of all of these nutrients in the name of getting a 1% or less decrease in the likelihood, in the chance of getting a heart attack. Whatever that even means. I don't even understand what that means. A 1% less chance of getting a heart attack. Are you kidding me? You want to take a poison prescription drug? for a 1% less chance of, of getting a heart attack? What does that even mean? That means you have a 99, still have a 99% chance of getting an extra, uh, of getting a second heart attack? These statistical, uh, the, the statistical basis of taking drugs or, or how we take prescription medicine or how we assess the effectiveness of a drug is ridiculous, absolute stupidity. It doesn't mean you're not going to get a heart attack. It means you'll have a 1% less chance of getting a heart attack, but you will definitely deplete your body of key nutrients. You will definitely be toxifying your body, as with all drugs. You will definitely be causing muscle and fatigue issues, among other side effects. And it will definitely, as all drugs do, require the diversion of nutritional resources so your body can protect itself from the poison. That's what your body sees. Your body doesn't see a statin drug for your heart. It sees a poison that it has to get rid of and has to detoxify. According to research published in the May 1st, 2017 edition of JAMA Internal Medicine, quote, in a large observational study of personnel and their family members, statin use was associated, of military personnel and their family members, statin use was associated with increased odds of having a back disorder, including spondyl uh, spondylosis, intravertebral disc disorders, herniated discs, and spinal stenosis. Why? Unquote. Why? Because cholesterol is important for everything. It's important for your bones. It's important for your discs. It's important for your muscles. You take a statin drug, of course you're going to increase the likelihood of problems there. For every 17 individuals who were prescribed a statin, one person had a diagnosed back disorder. Lead author Dr. Una Makris, Makris of the VA North Texas Health healthcare system said, quote, some of these adverse effects from statins can greatly impact day-to-day -day quality of life for our patients, unquote. These results come on top of two previous studies, one in the American Journal of Medicine from 2012 and a second from May, uh, the May 2008 edition of the Journal, uh, the Journal of General Internal Medicine that found that statin use was associated with musculoskeletal pain, including back pain among individuals without arthritis. So what is the real cause of heart disease? It's not the cholesterol, okay? Let's get that mean, let's get that idea, let's get that silly, antiquated, ridiculous notion out of our heads. It's not the cholesterol that's causing the heart disease. So what is it? We clearly have a problem. All right, we'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you if you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business formulation, skin, uh, skin health questions, if you have questions about our true skin health products, or if you have a success story, if you'd like to just say hi and contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, you can purchase all the products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you'd like to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a longevity business, sell longevity products, get your products at the wholesale price, earn the tax benefits associated with having your own business. You can write off your home office, write off your stamps and your paper and your copy machine, and whatever, whatever uh, accoutrements you may have for your business. You can write them all off when you have your own business and you can also purchase longevity products at the wholesale price and you can make some money at the same time working out of your home for a one-time $25 fee. Call 8 Six six seven three five twenty four seventy. They can give you more information, or you can sign up right off our websites: brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. All right. So we know it doesn't cause heart disease. It's not cholesterol. Let's get that out of our heads. It's not cholesterol. A statin drug is not going to make much of a difference for you, except it will cause, like all drugs do, toxicity and nutritional deficiencies. And keep that in mind when you're taking your drugs. The more drugs you're on, the more important it is to get on a good nutritional supplement program. And that ridiculous idea that the drugs are going to interfere or the prescription, your nutrition will interfere with your prescription drugs is also silly. Nutritional supplements make your drugs work better. All right, so let's get this idea that we can drug ourselves back to health and that we can somehow take statin drugs and be better off for it. Let's get that out of our head. So what is it that causes, uh, that really causes heart disease? Well, it's the same thing that causes any degenerative disease. All degenerative diseases, all CDDs, chronic degenerative diseases, which account for 80% of our trillion dollar, multi trillion dollar healthcare costs, are based in the same problem deterioration and degeneration of the body. It's called chronic degenerative disease. The body is breaking down, the body is deteriorating. And the same thing that causes degenerative diseases in the bone or degenerative diseases in the skin or degenerative diseases in the liver or any other part of the body caused degeneration of the heart. It's the same thing. Heart disease is caused by the same thing that causes all disease and it's not cholesterol. And any boneheaded medical professional who thinks that it's cholesterol, who thinks otherwise, that it's not the same basic causes of degeneration that cause any disease, needs to go back to Biochem 101. Heart disease, like all illness, is the end result of the triangle. The three points of bodily breakdown that underlie all chronic disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and what I call the adrenal thyroid complex, the stress system, if you will. Once the adrenal glands become stressed out, you're producing lots of cortisol, secondary to or following digestive problems and blood sugar problems and mental and emotional issues. The stress management system kicks in, cortisol goes up and eventually the thyroid slows down between hypercortisol, too much cortisol, too much stress hormone, too much cortisol chronically, and a suppressed thyroid, you have all chronic disease. That triangle, that underlying triad, those three points, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex are the cause of all CDD, chronic degenerative disease, including heart disease. That means that the most immediate way to protect the heart, the most immediate cause is that third point, that, that, uh, the tip of the triangle, the adrenal thyroid complex, the stress nervous system. That's what we're talking about here, folks, the stress nervous system. If you want to get better, the first thing to do is to relax that stress nervous system, to tell the stress nervous system through chemistry and through mental and emotional strategies to stand down that you're not in survival mode, that your life is not being threatened. The sympathetic nervous system, the stress nervous system, this chronic long-term activation of the sympathetic nervous system is behind, it's the, it's the, 
the most uh, closely located point on the triangle of disease. Yes, the digestive system and the blood sugar system are involved, but the jumping off point is the stress nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, long-term sympathetic activation, which is based on digestive toxicity, dysbiosis, that is messed up gut bacteria, hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin, high, uh, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, and last but most certainly not least, emotional and mental distress. Do not underestimate the, and I know we talk about nutrition all the time and chemistry all the time and the physical nature of health, but don't underestimate the key relationship between emotional and mental distress and heart disease and really all diseases. This mental and emotional link to heart disease is generally called neurocardiology and it involves the relationship between the emotions, the brain, and the heart. This link is based on the idea that the heart is the center of the emotions. And in fact, it's also based on the idea that there's a lot of similarities between the heart and the brain. There, is, there are neurons, there are nerve cells in the heart that communicate to the brain. The heart is in fact a type of brain in the sense that it contains these brain cells, these neurons, these nerve cells that communicate to the brain. This creates a unified, a, a, a unified system, the heart-brain system. The nerve cells that are responsive to emotion that are in the heart has been recognized throughout history. Throughout history, we've, we've recognized that the heart is the seat of the emotions. This neurocardiology concept is critical to understand if we're going to be able to deal with heart disease. The biggest proponent of neurocardiology is, is an institution, an organization called HeartMath, M-A-T-H, HeartMath. It was founded in uh, 1991, quoting from their website, HeartMath.com was founded to, uh, quote, help individuals, organizations, and the global community incorporate the heart's intelligence, that means it's a brain, the heart's intelligence, into their day-to-day -day experience of life by connecting the heart and science in ways that empower people to greatly reduce stress, build resilience, and unlock their natural, intuitive guidance for making better choices, unquote. This is what the bright side is all about. Heart math and the bright side are aligned in the sense that we both recognize intuition. We both recognize the natural ability the body has to heal. We both recognize intelligence that's located throughout the body. Intelligence that's not, uh, not localized to the brain, but spread out. Intelligence that is in every organ of the body, including the heart. The heart math people are huge proponents of working with the mental and emotional aspects of heart disease like we are here on the bright side. In the book, The Heart Math Solution, which I highly recommend to anybody who's dealing with heart disease issues or doesn't want to be dealing with heart disease issues or, or just wants to see from a scientific perspective the relationship of the mental nature and the emotional nature and even, yes, the spiritual nature to our physical well-being, read this book, The Heart Math Solution. It's an absolute must-read for anyone. Really, it's an absolute must-read for anyone interested in health, but especially if you are confronting the specter of cardiovascular disease of any kind. The book, The Heart Math Solution, is based on what they call the heart, health, uh, the heart Math Heart Health System. It talks about the impact of our thoughts, the impact of our feelings on how well our heart functions, and it discusses the impact of uh, mental and emotional stressors to heart health. And of course, sugar is involved, digestive toxicity involved, drugs are involved. These all represent stressors to the body and to the, and to the heart itself. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return with more good health information right after this. Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. We do have lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health questions, nutritional supplementation questions, if you or a loved one is dealing with some kind of health challenge, you want help, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010. A couple of interesting stories, and we'll get to your phone calls here. Characteristics of metabolically unhealthy skinny people, lean people. 
Compared to people who are of normal weight and metabolically healthy, subjects who are of normal weight but metabolically unhealthy have a more than threefold higher risk of mortality and or heart, uh, cardiovascular events, i.e. heart disease. Now, what does this mean, metabolically healthy? Well, metabolic, uh, metabolically healthy refers to metabolism. Metabolism is the sum total, the bottom line, of how much we're breaking down compared to how much we're building up. Negative metabolism or net negative metabolism is going to be breaking down more than you're building up and vice versa. Positive metabolism is when you're building up more than you're breaking down. When we're younger, we're positive. We're in the, re we're in the black. We're, br we're building up more than we're breaking down. If we're breaking down faster than we're building up, we can still be skinny. And you will have higher risks of mortality and cardiovascular disease and really other diseases as well. It's not about how skinny you are. In fact, according to the study, if, you have, if you're skinnier, if you're leaner, especially in the bottom part of your body, in the lower part of your body, you're at higher risk. Not necessarily, but you could be at higher risk. That's because it's not about your leanness or your obesity as much as it's about your metabolism, how fast you're breaking down. Metabolism is how well your body is based and how well your body processes energy. And this energy processing is based in the digestive system and the blood sugar system. And it also has, uh, it's also somewhat related to the thyroid and the adrenal glands. Where have you heard that before? It's called the triangle of disease. The triangle is about metabolism. It's about how we process energy, and it shows up in how fast we're breaking down versus how fast we're building up. It's not about skinny. It's not about fat. It's not about your bone mineral density. It's not about your, uh, how, what you weigh. It's not about your body mass index. It's about metabolism. It's about energy. It's about how well our body utilizes energy. It's based in digestion and it's based in the blood sugar system and uh, cortisol which increases the body's breakdown and the thyroid, which prevents or slows down buildup when it's hypo, when it's, in, when it's not operating at peak efficiency, is the real cause of all disease. All right, let's see. Get one more here, and then we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Two new studies offer insights into gastrointestinal dysfunction in Parkinson's patients. I've been saying this for years. Parkinson's disease is based in the digestive system. No surprise if you've been listening to this program because all disease is based in the digestive system. This is from the Journal of Parkinson's Disease. Constipation is one of the most common non-motor related complaints affecting Parkinson's disease patients. Constipation is based, uh, initially anyway, in eating the wrong food. Now, later on, you may have some brain, some motor problems, some brain problems that affect the digestive system. And this is why everybody with Parkinson's disease is going to have some kind of digestive health issue. First, they're gonna have a digestive health issue as a cause. And then second, they're gonna have a digestive health issue as an effect. Parkinson's disease, like all health challenges, begins in the gut. Once the brain, the, the motor area of the brain starts to deteriorate, it's very difficult not to have intestinal problems like constipation because the brain regulates the intestine. So what do you do? If you're dealing with Parkinson's disease, start off with, an, uh, with a Swero V cleanse. Or if you don't wanna do a Swero V cleanse, do a fast. Either way, give your digestive system a break. Second step, do a food diary elimination diet where you write down what you eat, Every day, starting with your favorite foods, try to eat just one kind of food a day, write it down, take copious notes, be like a, de a detective, just take notes, and then assess the relationship between the foods you're eating and your digestive symptomology. What you'll find is certain foods cause digestive problems, eliminate those foods. And then you start taking care of your digestive system using good nutrition and good foods, i.e. probiotics, i.e. fermented foods i.e. vegetable juices, aloe vera. Make sure that you're using uh, your uh, connective tissue building supplements like gelatin and glucogel caps, bone broth protein. These are all strategies for you for digestive health. And don't forget the fiber. You'll get fiber in your vegetable juices if you use a Vitamix or a Nutri, Nutri Bullet, but you can make your own fiber beverage. Grind up flax seeds and chia seeds. That's what I do. Grind up flax seeds and chia seeds, put them in water, stir them up, Put a little cinnamon in there, clove, ginger, nutmeg, whatever spices you like. Shake it up. I throw a little nutritional yeast just to bump up the B vitamin content. Nutritional yeast, by the way, is an amazing, amazing nutritional supplement slash food. 
Nutritional yeast is loaded with selenium and iodine and magnesium and zinc and B-complex. It's just powerful food. You're actually eating cells. You're eating yeast cells. And if you have yeast and uh, fungal infections, it does, it's not going to affect that. Don't worry about it. You're actually eating cells. Whenever you eat cells, as in eating egg cells or eating algae cells or eating uh, uh, yeast cells, you're eating everything a cell needs in order to function correctly. And because all disease is cell disease, this is going to improve your health no matter what, no matter what your health challenges are, even if you don't have health challenges. Nutritional yeast. You can add nutritional yeast right to your water. Tastes delicious, by the way. Nutritional yeast. You, I've seen people put on popcorn now. Nutritional yeast. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Oregon and welcome Bill to the bright side. Hey, Bill, what's up? Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. What's going on, man? Well, I'm trying to get, I started to get this, this pimple on the middle thing, middle finger of uh, my uh, hand, uh, right on the joint. Okay. Gone. Well, never pimped. But it never went away. But like the like skin. It's not a. Like it's not a pimple. There. It's not a pimple. It's a cyst, and it's starting off at the bottom layer, the very bottom layer of the skin. The skin is a de is deceiving in its appearances because it doesn't look like it's got layers to it, but it does. And the bottom layer, the dermis, is where these things appear from. Now, pimple on the skin, on the face, is different from what you're talking about. Pimples on the face usually involve the follicles, the holes in the face, the pores in the face. On the skin, that's not what you're looking at. The, or I'm sorry, on the finger, that's not what you're looking at. You're looking at a cyst. Cysts are usually, usually related to problems with blood sugar or problems with the hormone estrogen. Now, I'm guessing that you probably have a blood sugar issue, and that's probably where it's coming from. You're not going to be able to approach it topically. There's nothing you can do topically. You may be able to go to a, a surgeon, a plastic surgeon or a dermatologist who can cut it out, but you can't put any cream on the surface or any, any kind of uh, medicine on the surface to make it go away. It's in the lower levels in the dermis. So what I'd be doing is I would be regarding that. Uh, it's, that's not a big problem. The real problem is why it's there, and that would really be a blood sugar issue. You've got to have something else going on. could also involve the hormone estrogen, which means you have a digestive problem. Whenever you have a hormone, an estrogen issue, whether it's a female health issue or whether it's a cyst or a skin DAC or a mental, sometimes estrogen can cause brain problems, mental problems, mental health problems. You're dealing with digestive issues because the digestive system, particularly the intestine and the liver, are where estrogen is metabolized. Now, the liver, of course, also is a sugar processing organ, so you got a couple things going on there. Hang on, Bill, and I'll tell you what to do when we come back from our break, so don't go away. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. Let's, uh, we're talking to Bill in Oregon. Bill, you there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, so you got to have some other health stuff going on, and that's where you really want to focus. Yeah. I'd be focusing on the blood sugar issue and then the digestive issue via estrogen, the hormone estrogen. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. How old are you, sir? 73. Okay. And any, are you on any prescription medicine? No, I don't take drugs of any kind. Good for you. Any uh, health challenges? Yeah, all the all the things you just talked about. Well, that's where you want to focus on. I've been doing this for 35 years, Bill. I, I know of which I speak usually. So that's where you want to be. Uh, that's really really where you want to be focusing on. Here's the good news, Bill. Your finger and the cysts that are developing are diagnostic tools that will allow you to be your own doctor. So you can see when your skin starts to improve that you're on the right track. Number one, I'd be doing the whole food thing as I outlined before, uh, before we picked up the, before we started our phone calls. Food diary, elimination diet, focus on digestive health, eliminating problem foods, etc. Uh, you might want to start off, as I said uh, before we took the phone calls, with a Swero V cleanse. Uh, then you want to work with your blood sugar. You might want to use the Sweeties. Also, magnesium is a great supplement. Zinc is very important. Zinc's a must-have. 
Zinc is an absolute must-have. 50 milligrams of zinc. I like zinc picolinate, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's hard to find from foods, uh, and it's real cheap and expensive supplement, especially if you're 73 years old. It'll help you with your blood sugar. It'll help you with your digestive system, and it'll help you directly with your skin as well. You might want to consider progesterone cream which will help balance out estrogen. You should be on probiotics. The Nightly Essence is my favorite probiotic, also fermented food. All the stuff we talk about here all the time on the digestive system and the blood sugar system. The two major points, though, for you is it's not a skin problem. It's a cyst problem, and it's, init- it, it, it's starting its life. It's beginning in the lower levels of the skin, which is where the connective tissue is. The connective tissue is the great dumping ground of toxicity in the body. The body will dump off toxins, whether those toxins are coming from sugar or, or, or the wrong kinds of foods or from uh, poorly, uh, poorly metabolized uh, uh, elements in food, poorly digested elements in food. It will get dumped out in the connective tissue. So you want to be focusing on the digestive system and the blood sugar system. Now, if you want to do other things, the stress management system can, will help too. But first and foremost, I'd be focusing on blood sugar and the digestive system. All right, Bill, I'm going to motivate. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it, brother. All right, let's go to Larry in Indiana. Good morning, Larry. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, sir. Hey, I wanted to ask you about uh, the two methods of flushing out your colon uh, and also uh, small intestine using okay. uh, the top-down uh, flush they call colonics, where you drink uh, uh, four glasses of water and two, two uh, teaspoons of salt, sea salt, and the bottom-up, where you do the enema, from, you know, through the rectum. So there's two ways of flushing I, out. I wouldn't, I don't know that salt would, it seems like salt would, well, salt might, salt might pull water into the colon. I would do vitamin C if you wanted to do a, a flush, uh, like a, as you say, a top-down flush. I would do vitamin C. Uh, the problem with these top-down flushes like vitamin C or salt is you might get crampy or bloaty. So it might be a little bit uncomfortable. Working the other way around, it's not, you're not going to have that problem. And it, rather than an enema, I would do a colonic. Now, colonic to me, you, you use the term colonic for the, as you say, top down. Colonic to me is when they stick a hose up your butt, if you know what I'm saying, and they flush you out. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Those are awesome. Those are awesome. I tell a story often. Uh, I had a girlfriend who was a colonic therapist, and this is about 15, 20 years ago, and uh, I wasn't really hip to having a colonic, as some people aren't. I'm sure you understand. But I got food poisoning one time. Uh, it was actually New Year's Eve. I got food poisoning. And uh, New Year's Day, I was so miserable. I don't know if you ever had food poisoning, but it is just god-awful miserable. And so she talked me into having a colonic, and I didn't resist it because I was so miserable. She said it would improve, it'd make me feel better, and she was right. I went from feeling so miserable, uh, I couldn't even, I could barely walk uh, after I had a colonic to, I wouldn't say I was 100% improved, but I was dramatically improved. And I became a believer in colonics uh, ever since, and I've had them regularly ever since. And they are really awesome. If you never had one, you feel so light on your feet. It's amazing. And I, I do recommend them. Make sure that they're replacing, most colonic therapists these days will replace the bacteria uh, that are lost out when you flush, uh, but you, some, sometimes they don't. So find a colonic therapist who will replace the bacteria after the flush, and I, I really do recommend them. You know, and without being too gross here, some of these machines, these colonic machines, you can actually see what's coming out of you as you're being flushed, and from it's unbelievable. We'll leave it at that. It's unbelievable. Parasites come out of there, and all kinds of stuff comes out of there. But it's, it, I, I do recommend them more so than the, as you say, the top down. Does that help, Larry? Yeah, they do the top down. They call it the top down when you get a colonoscopy. You know. Oh yeah, medical. yeah, yeah. They use they use all kinds of they use a go lightly and nasty drinks for that. Um, yeah, right. So the yeah, salt water, I, the sea salt is supposed to be much safer. You know, you can read about it on the internet. Did, have and, you tried uh, it? They say it cause any side effects. You know, I haven't done sea salt. I've done vitamin C, and I've recommended vitamin C. And magnesium also works, too. A sea salt and magnesium, they probably do the same thing. Only issue is the cramping and the bloating with that, and it could be uncomfortable for some folks. But it'll still work. Well, and I, what I, kind of probiotics would you use to replace the... the, the uh, well, here's the thing on probiotics. There's different brands. 
So you got to go by the brand, and they're all function a little bit differently for different people. They all work a little bit differently for different people. So you got to kind of experiment. I like the Nightly Essence because it's broad. You get a lot of different bacteria. You get a large dose, and you also get uh, enzymes with it as well. And it's the only one. Uh, it's the only brand I know that has enzymes. But you got to play around with the with the brands. They're all going to be a little bit different. I would start off with the Nightly Essence, and also uh, in a more uh, in a more long term kind of way, use fermented foods, fermented uh, radishes, fermented. Uh, a cabbage, fermented, anything really uh, to help replace the bacteria. The combination of fermented foods and, uh, and a good probiotic supplement is probably the best way to go. And also right, fiber. Right. Bacteria love fiber. All I right? Love, yeah. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, Larry. Take care, buddy. All right, Dale in Oregon, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, good morning, Ben. Uh, I've got a friend, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, he's a 78-year-old veteran, who's suffering from uh, stage four emphysema. Do you have any oh. suggestions? Uh, I'm sorry, is he, on, is he on oxygen? No, he's not. He He's uh, walking, you know, to uh, um, stimulate, uh, you know, the respiration. You know, he says that uh, he can't expel um, CO2. Uh, uh, that's, that's a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, breathing exercise is one thing. That's one thing you could do when you have Slow COPD. Slow deep breathing. Exactly. Slow deep breathing, and that's for emphysema, uh, all COPD, emphysema, kind of the same thing. Um, and then also using nutritional supplementation. Vitamin C is extremely important for the lungs. Vitamin E is extremely important for the lungs. We've been talking and will continue to talk about N-acetylcysteine, NAC, also very that, important for the okay. NAC. Uh, so I'd be using C and E and C and E. And ACE, NAC, correct, magnesium, zinc, okay. and all the, you know, basically all the things we talk about on the program all the time. Digestive toxicity will throw things off if he's activating the immune system and the inflammatory system with, with the wrong foods. That'll throw things off. Too much sugar will throw things off. It's basically everything we talk about on this program. The same ideas. Yeah. And the slow, deep breathing will help as well. I don't know if you could do any kind of any exercises or anything, that depending on he's how. walking. He, he, he exercises. Uh, he walks a mile. That will uh, help. To not, you know, up to a, a half a mile, and then he has to, bre uh, you know, stop, sit, and recover. Fine. And then he'll wa walk. That's great. More. That's great. That's great. Sounds like he's doing well, actually. Uh, had, was he Agent Orange or smoker? No, he was a smoker. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, he, you, the lungs actually recover. Now, at the age of 78, he's going to have to be a little bit, you know, pay a little bit more attention to things like food and supplements and exercise. But the lungs can recover. So keep up the good – tell him to keep up the good work with the exercise All and right. then throw in the supplements. And then don't, don't underestimate the relationship between food and blood sugar. They play a major role, if not a direct role. They play a major indirect role on the health of the lungs. So all the digestive support things we talk about in the program as well as, um, as, well as blood sugar issues. You know, the lungs, the respiratory – system has its own microbiome, has its own um, uh, probiotics. So using His diet uh, uh, suffers. You know, he, you know, he has no teeth. And so, he, you know, he, he eats like macaroni and cheese. No, no, not macaroni. I, 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 I can't tell him what to do. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, chicken soup. You know. Make him chicken soup. Tell him to make chicken soup or make him chicken soup. Aloe vera. I've been, bone, I've been making bone broth in a crock pot. And That's perfect. Give him some of the bone broth. Tissue. Bone broth, aloe vera, uh, bone broth protein smoothies. There's lots of things yeah. you could do, even with no teeth. Hey, I got to go, man. Thanks for your call, Dale. We're over. That's the end of the program. All right. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, especially our Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. You can check out the longevity products at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.